In this episode, we look at the hot topic of heat stress and how we can use rumen protected fats to improve the ability of dairy cows to withstand heat stress. And we'll also hear from a special guest. Heat stress is a major issue for dairy cows and cows can really be, start to be affected by heat stress at even quite low environmental temperatures, much above 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. And cows will take practical measures just like ourselves to get out of a heat stress situation, but also their physiology will change and that can have major effects on the level of production of the animal and also that can lead to big problems in terms of animal health as well. Heat stress can have major negative effects on, on productivity of dairy cows. And the first one that will be noticed is their reduction in dry matter intake, which can be 25 to 30% lower compared to thermal neutral cows. And that will be part of the reason we see a, a major reduction in, in milk yield uh, for cows under heat stress because they're eating less. But also we see physiological changes during heat stress, which diverts energy away from milk production. Uh, and we, we will see a, a major fall off in actual milk volume. The other big issue will be the risk of acidosis as cows are eating less, generating less saliva. We see less bicarbonate uh, coming into the rumen for a buffering effect. So we can also see increases in acidosis and associated issues such as lameness, uh, negative effects in fertility, and of course major reductions in milk fat. So there are many practical things we can do to reduce the direct effects of heat stress in dairy cows. But from, from a nutritional perspective, we can use rumen protected fats as a key nutritional tool to try to, or to help reduce the negative effects of heat stress. So we've described rumen protected fats as cool ingredients. The key factor being that, that unlike other nutrients which are fermented in the rumen, rumen protected fats are not fermented in the rumen. So they generate uh, very little heat during the processes of digestion and mastication and they also are very efficiently converted from metabolizable energy to net energy used uh, for maintenance and productive purposes. So as we feed higher fat diets in heat stress conditions there's a lot less metabolic heat produced in the animal which helps to reduce the level of heat stress from within the animal. Hello, um, my name's John Newbold and I'm Professor of Dairy Nutrition at uh, SIUC, Scotland's Rural College. And there is a metric that people use to assess the heat load, the amount of heat that an animal is experiencing, uh, THI, the Temperature and Humidity Index, which combines both temperature and relative humidity. Um, and I think there's really a new appreciation in the last few years that the THI at which production begins to be compromised is, is lower than previously thought. In other words, heat stress is more common. Cows that are experiencing high heat loads are really in, in something of a physiological trap. Um, cows themselves generate a lot of heat during digestion, in the rumen, absorption, metabolism. And if they can't dissipate that heat to the environment because the environment is too hot, they've got really no option other than to produce less of it. And I think important to mention that as climate change increases the number of days in which the world's dairy cows are exposed to high heat load, uh, then genetic selection of heat tolerant cows, uh, physiologically heat tolerant cows, is becoming more important, will become more important, highly relevant to, to cows in more tropical environments, but increasingly, I think, also to uh, cows in temperate uh, locations such as the UK. We 
we also know that in heat stressed animals, the concentration of buffers in saliva and the flow of saliva into the rumen can be reduced, also adding to that risk of acidosis. And this makes it very difficult to compensate for the lower feed intake simply by increasing the uh, amount of regular concentrates containing fermentable carbohydrates that are going into the rumen. I think the use of properly rumen inert fat supplements, such as those supplied by Volat Wilmar feed ingredients, is highly complementary to other approaches, management approaches, breeding approaches to the mitigation of heat stress. So the use of shades, sprinklers, fans, etc., uh, to try to improve the physical environment. So short term management of cows exposed to periods of heat stress should include both these management um, uh, interventions as well as nutritional adaptations. So that's it for episode two, but please follow us on our social channels where you can find more information and more data on fatty acid nutrition in dairy cows.